Good morning. Welcome to the ABC video done each weekend for New Life Community Church in Fair Oaks, California. I'm Daryl Sturgeon, and this morning, Glenn Ralph will be speaking for us in a few minutes. So he and I have kind of tra traded places for today. And we welcome you and invite you to sing along now. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For a part of the family, the family of God. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine. For his skies, they turn to gray. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know Don't worry or the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Somehow that song got higher and higher <laughs> the longer we sang it. Keep looking up. 
in times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one, be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, Let's start over and maybe just a, a notch higher went too high and then too low. And the people watching this are now chuckling at me. In times like these, I have a savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Lord, we come to you this morning, not because we're worthy but because you have invited us into your presence. Thank you, Lord. you have, have given us your word and your promise and we have the joy of knowing our sins forgiven. Yes, Lord. We have the joy of knowing that there is glory awaiting us one of these days on the other side. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory for you are and were and evermore shall be. And we thank you today that we can come into your presence. And we pray today for the situation in our country, for America. Lord, we ask that you would have your way, that you would undertake in these many things that are going on. We think of the COVID-19 pandemic and how so many people are afflicted with it. Many have died. But Lord, you know about this. And as there have been plagues in the past to reach people and wake them up, Lord, may it be that America would be wakened up in this situation. And may we learn to call out to you and put our trust and confidence in you and allow your will to be done in our nation. As we think of the election that's coming up in just a few days, Lord, may your will be done. May those who should be elected would be elected. Yes. May it be that those who are Christians would indeed vote and vote according to their Christian faith. We. We, we feel so sad when we realize that many Christians just don't bother to vote and they don't stand for what is biblically sound. But Lord, this year, may, may we vote according to your word and, and be responsible. And Lord, many have needs today. Those who are sick, we pray for your healing touch upon them. We ask that your, your stripes would be applied to their lives and bring healing. And we pray for our unsaved loved ones. We all have so many. Lord, we pray that 
even this crisis time that we're going through would be a time to draw them to yourself and may they see that you are still on the throne and we may not know what tomorrow holds but Lord we know that you hold our hand and we pray that these loved ones would discover that as well and I pray for Glenn today as he brings the word <clears throat> may you minister through him may your blessing be upon him and upon all of us who watch this video today in Jesus name Amen it's up to you Glenn Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are certainly living in perilous times today. Uh, a lot of folks are doing well, and a lot of other folks are struggling for various reasons. So the question I have is today is, how are you doing? How are you doing? Now, when I ask that question, some of you might respond, not very well. Some might respond, I'm doing great. Uh, one of the phrases people sometimes Christians throw out is I'm uh, blessed and highly favored well I hope you're feeling blessed and highly favored today but I believe I have a word for you today that will be an encouraging word that will help you in times that we're going through right now that are so difficult for so many people now uh, I, uh, I wanted to start out by just mentioning that I uh, I receive a, a newspaper that comes in the mail. It's a very conservative newspaper. It's not a Christian paper, but it's very conservative. And it comes once a week. I get it in the mail. <clears throat> and they had an article this last week. And it, in the article, I hope you can see this, it says, The Gift of Hardship. Now, if you're going through a hard time, you may not feel like it's much of a gift. The picture is of a, of a runner, a sprinter, looks to me like he's got part of his left leg missing and so he's got one of these kind of deals that you can run with part of a leg missing attached to his leg and, and he's it looks like he's really running he could probably outrun me without any question probably outrun most of you <laughs> so so the article is uh, the gift of hardship now you may never have considered that hardship was a gift before but I, I wanted to read you a, a few quotes that the paper brought. Maybe you will find them to be helpful for you today. So there's a part of my introduction. Uh, let me read you some of the quotes from that article. It's a very long article. It's a good newspaper, by the way. If, you, it's, uh, if you're interested in the Epic Times, you might want to check it out. It, number one, uh, one of the quotes was, in times of hardship and suffering, we have an opportunity to improve ourselves. Did you ever consider that? How about that? Another one is, there is opportunity for wisdom and growth in suffering. Suffering can lead to good things. Wow, all things work together for good to those that love God. Did you ever hear that, read that scripture? Well, another one is, the biggest determinant in the course of our lives is not the situation, but rather our reaction to the situation. That's really true. That's really true. Here's another one. Because of the hardships those who weathered the Great Depression endured, they have a strength and resilience not found in other generations. I think that's true. The stories that I've heard about my parents and my grandparents, what they endured during the Great Depression, uh, were very, it was very tough times. And because of that, they, they were very hard and strong and uh, determined people. They were survivors uh, in, a, in a very clear way. Here's another quote. Hardships do not come without reason. We are being given a gift, a chance to improve ourselves. Well, Roman philosopher Seneca said, a gem cannot be polished without friction nor a man perfected without trials. Well, 
None of us enjoy trials. None of us enjoy suffering. None of us enjoy hardship. But it may very well be that God is giving the church and you and I as individuals an opportunity to excel past and through the hardships and through the suffering and through the difficulties. And it might turn out to be a, a, a hidden blessing for you and for me as we push our way through it, getting closer and closer to God. Now, if we're not careful in times like these, we can fall into one of the devil's traps. Allowing ourselves to develop a negative mindset and speaking ungodly things to ourselves and to others opens the door for even more satanic attacks. Did you ever look in the mirror and say, you are so ugly. Did you ever say that to yourself? <laughs> God doesn't say that about you. He says you're beautiful and perfectly made, made in his image. Did you ever, did you ever say to yourself, why did you do that? You're such a dummy. Looking in the mirror, looking at yourself. No, you're not a dummy. You're human. You make mistakes. Sometimes it can be quite catastrophic. But you're human. And God can forgive you and will forgive you. But you're not a dummy. I'm, a, I'm presuming that's true for you. <laughs> Does the Bible have anything to say to help us deal with the times that we're going through? Thankfully, yes, it does. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Peter. Oh, this is an interesting chapter in the Bible to read, an interesting book in the Bible to read. Father, we pray you bless our time in your word today. Give us an ear to hear what you are saying to us, Lord. Let us, Lord, receive your word today and, and let it be uh, food for us, spiritual food that will help us overcome some of the things that we're dealing with. This I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 3 through 6. I'm taking my glasses off so I can read this. <laughs> some of you got to put your glasses on to read. That's okay. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our hope is not dead. Our hope is not uh, meaningless. It's not based on nothing. It's based upon the reality of our Savior who overcome death, overcome pain, overcome hardship, and rose up out of that grave alive and well, and he lives today. So, Jesus who rose from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that, that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. You who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to re be revealed in the last time. Yes. Salvation is being revealed today. People are being saved today. In this you greatly rejoice. In this you greatly rejoice. Praise the Lord. Though now for a short while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Can you say amen? Yeah, I've been, I've been grieved by some various trials in my life. This has not been easy, an easy time. Amen. Yes, but we can rejoice in the fact that we have a hope. We have something to look forward to. We have a living God who has provided a a wonderful place for us to go when our life on earth is over. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, it's a wonderful reality. And let me tell you, just, to, just in case you were wondering, Jesus Christ is not sitting on his throne wearing a mask, wondering what in the world is he going to do. <laughs> All right? Picture that. You can't picture that. It's a ridiculous picture. He knows what's going on. He's in control. He's sitting on his throne in power. And, uh, and the Father is sitting on his throne in power. So even though we deal with various trials throughout our lives, we deal with various things. Uh, and our present difficulties have presented us with new ones. Isn't that the truth? 
we should not be surprised. Difficult times come for everybody. Sometimes people think because they're a Christian, they shouldn't have to go through difficult times anymore. Oh, contrary. <laughs> we all go through difficult times. It's, it's a common thing for everybody, including Christians, including you and including me. I have been through difficult times, and you have undoubtedly been through difficult times, and some of you are struggling now. You're wrestling with hard times now for all kinds of reasons. Well, let's look over to chapter 2 of 1 Peter. Verse 20 and 21 says, turn the page. What credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? I mean, God is not glorified when you make a big mistake and you get penalized for it. I, I was taking my grandmother to church one time on a Sunday night. And I was just having a good time with my grandmother, talking. We were just having a great time. And unbeknownst to me, a highway patrolman had snuck behind me on his motorcycle. And I didn't see him. And worse, I didn't see what the speedometer was doing. And it was going up and up and up. And he pulled me over and gave me a ticket on the way to church, taking my grandma to church. Well, he said, I, I followed you for about a mile, and you never saw me. He says, I was hoping you'd see me and slow down. Well, I wished I'd seen him slow down myself. This was a long time ago. But anyhow, uh, even though you're doing something good, don't feel like you're being persecuted by the devil if you get caught doing something wrong and they're penalized for it. You make a mistake and you've got to suffer the consequences. I, I, had, I had a friend who uh, used to like to buy things online. He'd watch these TV shows where they show products that they want to sell and and some of them look really good. I have bought a few of them myself. Some of those things that I have purchased that I thought I would be using all the time are sitting on the shelf in the garage. They rarely get used at all anymore. Well, he would buy all this stuff, and he'd have all kinds of neat new gadgets at his house. He was a gadget guy. He loved gadgets. Well, he would often say, Glenn, you need to pray for me that I get a miracle. I need a financial miracle. No, he didn't need a financial miracle, and he never got a financial miracle. He needed to learn to quit buying stuff on the air, quit buying stuff on his credit card that he couldn't really afford to pay for. And uh, I don't know that he ever learned it. He's on with the Lord now, so he don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. But when we're penalized for something that we've done that, that we deserve to be penalized for, don't think Jesus is getting glory from that. No, it, that kind of suffering isn't something that get, gives glory to God. It's just, oh well, something that you're having to deal with. It says when you do good and suffer, when you're doing the right thing and suffer, I was taking my grandma to church for crying out loud. I was doing something good. Well, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. Okay, but God's glorified. God is pleased with us when we, when we do things that are good and we get penalized for them. The Lord is, is aware and, and he... He's glorified and he's blessed by these things, by our, by our response to these things. And it says this, the verse 21 says, For to this you were called. To this we were called. To this we were called to suffer. To this we were called to deal with hardships. I don't know how that got in my Bible. But there it is. We're called to deal with suffering and struggle and hardship. Because, it goes on to say, Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that you and I should follow in his steps. Jesus suffered terrible things, especially in route to the cross, on the cross. And he didn't complain. He didn't gripe. He didn't start telling his friends, don't be serving this Jehovah God Look what's happening to me. It might happen to you too if you keep serving him. No, he, he completed the task that he came to work to complete. He died on the cross for your sins and my sins and by his stripes were healed. And he rose up from the grave letting the devil know I'm in control, buddy, now, not you. So we're, we're called to identify with his suffering and endure suffering with a good attitude and a right attitude and that's an important task. 
So we go through times of suffering. Suffering often presents unique challenges to us as we get older, especially sickness, disease, falls that produce broken bones, intense loneliness, loneliness, the death of family and friends. You know, as you get older, you, your friends become less and less, fewer and fewer, because they're gone in to be with the Lord, many of them. But we, we have financial struggles all, uh, all can bring different types of suffering to us, but suffering we may very well be doing even now. Suffering is a part of our calling in Christ. Christ's sufferings provides us with his example for us to follow uh, because Christ completed his mission and we're to complete our mission as well. We all have a, we all have a mission to complete. We all have a task. We all have a calling. Sometimes you'll hear young, young would-be pastors. They'll say to, uh, they might say to you, uh, uh, God's called me to full-time ministry. Well, I hope it is full-time. You know, they might have to get a job and support themselves and their family while they're ministering. That's a possibility. A lot of people do that. Not everybody gets hired to work to pastor very, you know, real large churches. Uh, sometimes it's not full-time, it, but it's, but you're full-time serving the Lord. And you and I also have a calling on us in our lives. Everybody is called by God to complete certain things. We have a calling. We have a responsibility in the Lord to complete the things that he's called us to do. We have our mission. Well, thankfully, uh, the suffering that we deal with is really only for a relatively short time. Our heavenly home and our glorious eternity should alert us to continue being faithful, earnestly looking forward to the things that God has provided. Jesus said, eyes have not seen and nor has ears heard, nor has it entered the heart of man the things that the Father has prepared for those that love him. We don't know all what those, all those things are, but I know they're going to be glorious and wonderful and incredible and worth getting there, worth having. So we can look forward to a, a heavenly time in one of these days. I've got more family and friends over there than I got here now, right? Maybe you do too. There was a song we used to sing when I was a boy in the church my grandparents attended when I would visit. <clears throat> Some of the words went like this. Someday, some happy day, from sin set free, I'll live <coughs> with Christ for a... That means all time. Someday... Someday we can look forward to that. We can have that in our hearts. Yes, this is a difficult time for me. Yes, I'm struggling. <coughs> Excuse me. But someday they're going to be over. Someday it's going to be past. Someday I'm going to have a glorious place to live and with my family and my friends that love the Lord. And we're going to have an eternity together in a glorious time. It's worth keeping that in mind. And let me tell you, we might all be together real soon in heaven. The coming of the Lord, the rapture of the church could happen at any time. We could all be going together here real soon. But the Lord may come for you today. Are you ready? Are you looking for his appearing? Are, are you, are you rejoicing and, and sharing the good news of the precious message that we have received with others? A lot of folks you, that you know may not know. And I'll bet you they want to go to heaven too. And just being a good, being a good person is not going to get you there. Well, I'm pretty good. Well, I'm really good. Oh, I'm as good as that guy. That doesn't cut it. Our goodness, our, our righteousness is not, means nothing. If our goodness and righteousness could get us into heaven, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. But he did have to come. We all come short of the glory of God. So once we accept him, repent of our sins and reject living a sinful life and serving the Lord and rejoicing in the things that we have coming our way down the road, the hope that we have in him is truly glorious and worth enjoying and worth anticipating and will be certainly worth entering into one of these days. Well, 1 Peter chapter 4. This is a too difficult scripture. Chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. 
Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange things, some strange thing happened to you. Don't think that God has singled you out, or don't think the devil has singled you out to persecute you and to give you a hard time. No, it's not a strange thing or an unusual thing or an odd thing to go through periods like what you may be going through today or may be coming tomorrow. It's not strange at all. We often want to cry out, why God, why did you pick on me? Why me? The question really should be, why not me? Why not you? Why, why should we be, safe, be, be, be able to avoid the struggles that everybody else goes through? Well, why not you? Why not me? Don't think it's strange. Don't think you're singled out. Uh, you, but remember, you're not alone. Glory to God. Uh, we all go through stuff like this. We all have times of intense pain and suffering and difficulties. You have not been singled out. Verse 13 says, but rejoice, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Oh, as glad as you can be now and looking forward to the goodness of God and what's coming. When it comes, you're going to be even more thrilled than you are today. You're going to be even more rejoicing than you can rejoice today. This is the reality that we have. So don't let the devil rob you of your peace and joy. <clears throat> Be careful. Well, let, let's go. I, I want to give you some, some things to, that you might want to do. All right, something th some things you might want to be uh, uh, need to think about. Number one, God has promised to never leave or forsake us. The Holy Spirit is already with you. If you're saved, born again of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is with you and in you. Be faithful to him. Don't allow the devil to get you to start confessing negative things like we sometimes look at ourselves in the mirror and say to ourselves, no, God has not forgotten you. He's not turned away from you. He has not rejected you, but he holds you very close to his heart and he's well aware of your situation and he'll help you through it. Don't be saying negative things to yourself or to others. Don't say what the devil says. Say what God says. <coughs> Number two, as Joseph remained faithful to God after being rejected by his brothers, sold by them into slavery, and being thrown into a dungeon after refusing to sin with his master's wife, he remained faithful to God despite all he suffered. And he never could turn on the TV and watch a good Christian program that would lift his spirit. He never could go to church and hear somebody talk about the goodness of God. He was literally, totally, completely all by himself. Yet he remained faithful to God. He uh, completed his task. He, he endured what he had to endure with a good attitude, confessing the truths of God to others. And God used him and put him in a position of tremendous power in the land of Egypt. So rejoice. Spend time. Spend time praising God and thanking God for all he has prepared for you in heaven. Great things are coming. We may, may not be all in heaven together. We may. Or we may all be in heaven together very soon. So be looking for the coming of the Lord. Be looking. Every day I look outside the window and I go, Lord, is this the day you're coming for me? Is this the day you're coming for us? Well, it may very well be. Uh, Let's, let's go for a moment over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Is there, is there scripturally a, a reason why we go through difficult times like this? Is there, is there a reason? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 through 5 says this. Get to the right page here. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation. Why? Why did God do that? Well, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort by which we ourselves are comforted by God. 
As God comforts you, as the Holy Spirit ministers to you and lifts you up and encourages you, we also have the opportunity and the, and the, and the responsibility to be an encouragement to others. As God lifts us and brings us through difficult times, we are to help others be lifted up and help them through their difficult time with the same comfort that God has comforted us. Be faithful. Be faithful. Complete your task. Uh, for as the, let's keep reading. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, whew, suffering abounds in us. Yes, okay. Uh, so our, our help, that's what the word consolation means. So our help also abounds through Christ. Now, if we're afflicted, it's for your consolation, your help, and your salvation, uh, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also endure. Paul says, you know, I've, I've done a lot of suffering, and, 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 and my suffering is, is, is being used by God to be an encouragement to, to you. Uh, and you may be going through some of the same sufferings. Paul says that, uh, that I might be going through, or that we might be going through. Well, don't be surprised and don't be dismayed. For if we are comforted, it's for your comfort and your salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the comfort the Holy Spirit offers. Well, what a wonderful truth. The Holy Spirit will comfort us. And others that have gone before us may very well help us and comfort us as well, bring the same comfort to us that they received there in their struggle. Well, you also, as you are helped by the Holy Spirit, can offer that same help to others and help them through their sufferings and through their struggles and through their difficulties. That's a part of our task in the Lord. Well, so again, let me get back to some points. Uh, and I want to be very careful to emphasize once more to be careful what comes out of your mouth, what you speak. Only speak the things that God says not the devil. Don't fall into a negative mindset and start criticizing and groaning and moaning and complaining. I guarantee you nobody else wants to hear you complain. They got things to complain about themselves and they're not burdening you with their complaints. Don't burden others with yours. Take your cares to the Lord. For he cares for you. He cares for you. Take your cares for the Lord, to the Lord. He will be faithful to you and speak the things that God that God says in his word. Number one, God loves me and, and, and is with me. That's an enduring truth that remains true always for the believer. Christ loves me. God loves me and he's with me forever. He's never going to leave me and reject me and put me on the shelf and forget about me. Never, never, never. Number two, put on some Christian music that praises and worships God. That's how God, David overcame his depression and his struggles. He had some of the same struggles that you and I have. He had a tendency to get down. And when he would get down, he would start playing. I was going to say turn on the radio and start worshiping. He would start playing his harp and praising the Lord and worshiping God. And he wrote some pretty neat psalms in the process of doing that. And not only that, King Saul would call him in and come, would you pray, play on your harp and sing for me? And it lifted the, the heavy spirit that came upon Saul. God used David to minister that to, to Saul. Well, call Christian friends and family and, 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 and uh, remind them of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. We serve a good God, and he's faithful. He will be faithful to you and to lift you up if you give him an opportunity. And speak out and tell you yourself again the things that God says. God loves me. I'm his favorite. He told me so. You heard about the father that on his deathbed he called all of his children in and he said, I want you to know, individually, I want you to know you are always my favorite. And each one of them came in and said goodbye to their dad. And, and each one he gave that word to, you're my favorite. They were all his favorite. They all had an equal place of favor in his heart. And we are all equally God's favorite. He loves you. He cares for you. And he will be faithful to minister to you and lift you up if you give him an opportunity. you got to go to him and, and ask him. Call on him for help. Uh, so speak out and tell yourself the same things that God says. Well, where do, you, where, do you, where do you find the things that God says? Oh, in his word. Spend time in his word. One of my favorite scriptures in 
Psalms 34. It says, This poor man cried and the, cried out, and the Lord delivered him out of all his troubles. Cry out to the Lord. He will help you get through your difficulties. He may, he may very well bring a quick answer that would lifts you instantly. Because he can do that. He's all powerful. He has that ability. But whether he does that or not, he still loves you and is faithful to you. Seek him and spend time in his holy presence. That, that's my, that's my, next, my next point. Spend time in the Bible and entertain the presence of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 40, 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And waiting on the Lord doesn't mean sitting, sitting mindlessly just waiting. You know, like, like a husband has to sit out there in the, in the living room waiting for his wife to get dressed so they can go to dinner. He waits and waits and thinks, oh my goodness, it takes her forever. That's not what that waiting means. It means as a waiter waits on you at a restaurant, careful to be attentive to your every desire and need. They're there. They're working. They're busy. Be busy and waiting on the Lord. Worship Him. Praise Him. Spend time in the Word. Thank you for your Word. Pray the Word of God. Find a scripture that's that suits your needs and say, Lord, I ask you, bring this word to pass in my life. Lord, bring this healing. Bring this miracle. Lift me up, Lord, from my, from my difficulty. Be, 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 be faithful to spend time in his presence. And the Holy Spirit who lives within you will come in a new way and, and lift you and surround you with his holy presence. And even bring a greater sense of worship to you. And you'll be praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord. You'll be having an awesome time in God. It's important to do that once in a while. So spend time reading and listening to the Bible and, and entertain the presence of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit lifts you, you will be able to help others rise above their lonesomeness, their struggles, their pain, their hardship. And, uh, and God will use you to encourage others in their walk with the Lord. Be faithful. Be faithful. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. And I like to do that and sing worship. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait in your presence. Lord, today we come to you and we thank you for your word that reassures us that hardship and suffering and difficulties are not anything unusual. We should not be surprised when things come our way. After all, Father, we wouldn't appreciate the mountaintop experiences with you if we didn't have some valley experiences to contrast them with. Lord, I pray today, if anyone is listening that is suffering and struggling right now, that you will lift their hearts and lift their spirits. Help them to lift their eyes to the skies and, and praise you and worship you and spend time in your presence and renew their time in the word, that your word can be a food that sustains them and, and nourishes them. And as they spend time in your presence, your Holy Spirit, will minister to them and lift them as well. Jesus said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for they shall be fed. Well, uh, when we hunger, we read the word of God and we filled, we're filled spiritually by the word of God. And as we spend time in God's presence, the Holy Spirit flows through us, flows into us and through us and, and uses us to minister to the others. Well, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, shall be fed, shall get what they need. Let's learn to, to be faithful to do that rather than spending time moaning and groaning and complaining and, and, and trying to influence others about how bad things are and how bad things are probably going to get. Don't fall into that trap. It's a satanic trap. Instead, reach out to the Lord and, and lift up your voice to the Lord and lift up your spiritual eyes to see all the glorious things that are coming. 
and be faithful to encourage others and lift them as well as you're being lifted up. And uh, this I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you this week and may the Lord use you to minister to others this week. Praise the Lord. God bless.